I'm about to teach you how to handle your topology like a pro. Here's a couple of simple rules that you can follow to level up your topology game, even if you're a beginner at this. Rule number one, always try to keep quads only. When I say quads, I'm talking about faces which have four edges around them. This here is a quad because it has one, two, three, four edges around it. This is a triangle because it only has three faces. And this is called an n-gon because it has more than four edges. The reason this is important is because if you have triangles, it becomes very difficult to use various tools in Blender. For example, since this is quads only, it's very easy to just add a loop cut with Control R. It's very easy to select edge loops and bevel them. Everything works well when you have quads. If you have triangles here for whatever reason, and if you try to add a loop cut, it's not going to go all the way around. It's also very difficult to instantly select edge loops like you can see right here. All of a sudden, it's just a lot more difficult to work with this type of shit. A good example of why quads are important is a UV sphere. If you add a UV sphere, and let's say you want to add a subdivision surface modifier, you're going to get this weird shit going on at the top. Even with smooth shading, this is still going to be visible. But if you have a sphere made out of only quads, then you can easily subdivide this. Smooth shading works well. Everything is more balanced everything works better on this type of mesh and if you're wondering how I made a sphere with only quads here's how add a cube control 2 or control 3 to subdivide this with a subdivision surface modifier apply that with control a add a cast modifier set the factor to 1 and apply that now you got a perfect sphere with only quads Rule number two, always try to make sure that all your faces on a mesh have approximately the same size and approximately the same shape. For example, let's say you're trying to make a little cylinder stick out of this cube over here. You might be tempted to add a loop cut over here, another loop cut over here, bevel those loop cuts, and then use this surface to model whatever you wanted to model. And while this isn't necessarily terrible, it can give you problems. For example, if you add a subdivision surface modifier to this object, this part becomes extremely round while this part is pretty sharp. You get all this weird stretching. Now you gotta add new loop cuts to fix this. Before you know it, you got a whole bunch of very long faces. And the worst thing you can do is try to do something with those very long faces, such as extrude another shape like this. Now you got some very long and thin faces like this. Next thing you know, this is giving you all kinds of shading artifacts over here. Even if you try to tighten this up with some more loop cuts to fix the shape, now you got this going on over here. Now if you wanna add something else over here, you can't get around this thing. It's very hard to work with this type of shit, you understand? So a better way to add details to an object is to first subdivide the object and think of each face here as a pixel. This is effectively the resolution of a three-dimensional object. Now anything you want to do you can just use some faces on that area without affecting anything else anywhere else on this object. When you subdivide this it behaves almost exactly the way you would expect it to and of course you're not gonna get any shading artifacts like this. It's also very easy to add perfect bevels to fix up your geometry and it's overall a cleaner workflow. Now a disclaimer I know that this is going to crank up your polygon count. If if that's what you're worried about then it's going to be a completely different workflow. This is a technique that you use for creating high quality models and typically the right way to use this workflow here that I'm showing you right now is to first model in extremely high poly and then either bake your details as normal maps or later try to optimize this shape to reduce the number of polygons on it. Because after you're finished modeling then you can afford to have bad topology and bad geometry because if you can get your finished shape and you get your shading under control you won't be bothered if you can't use your tools anymore because you don't need them anymore now you're finished. Which brings us to rule number three. Rule number three is do not use a boolean modifier unless you really know what you're doing. Most of you people use boolean modifiers but you don't understand how to clean up topology because you don't understand the most fundamental principles of topology. You're watching guys on YouTube who are teaching you to use a boolean modifier but if you don't understand how this affects your models you're gonna have big problems. And here's the type of problems that you're gonna get. Let's say we're trying to use this cylinder to cut a hole in this cube. We're gonna lower this into the cube, add a boolean modifier to the cube, set that to different and target the cylinder, apply the boolean, delete the cylinder, and now we got a hole. Well, once again, now you completely fucked up your model because you can't really use any loop cuts, you can't select your geometry instantly, god forbid you try to use a subdivision surface modifier, I don't think this is the look you're trying to get here. The right way to make a hole without completely fucking up your workflow is to add a cube, subdivide that cube a couple of times and use this as resolution for the cut. Now if you're trying to make a circular cut, you can inset this, use loop tools to create a circle from it. Now you can can delete this if you want to and extrude this downwards and you can still use your loop cuts over here you can very easily select your geometry and do whatever you want with it if you subdivide this it's not going to be a complete mess it's only a mess down here because we have an end gone but you can fix that by deleting this face taking this edge loop and going to face grid fill 
Now you got quads only and now this behaves much better. If you're trying to make different shapes and not just circles, first try to select an area roughly in the shape that you're trying to make, then inset that and then try to rearrange this geometry so you get the shape that you're trying to cut. If it's something simple, you're not going to have a problem. You're going to be able to create your hole by just doing this. If it's a more complicated shape, you might have to use a boolean modifier, but make sure that if you use a boolean modifier, you know how to clean up properly and you understand the potential consequences of using a boolean modifier. Fire. You can completely destroy your model if you don't do this right. Let's give credit where credit is due. All this shit that I'm teaching you guys right now, I learned from Thomas Colon 3D. Go subscribe to his channel. I'm gonna redirect you to his video for how to use a boolean properly and how to clean your shit up if you do use a boolean modifier. Let's say that I've created the shape that I wanted here and now I want to optimize this for a game. To do that, I have to get rid of as much of this geometry as possible, which means I can't have all this shit going on. I can't have this many edges all over the place. This might be too heavy, especially if it's a more complex model like this here in the background. You obviously can't import this into the game program. Look how many vertices you have over here. So if you're trying to reduce the number of polygons and you're definitely sure that you finished making your model, here's something that you can do. Select a surface which you want to clear of any polygons on it. You want to turn this into an N-gon. Make sure that you're using a flat surface because if you have a curved surface, this ain't gonna work. So in this case, I'm gonna select this face and control shift right click on this face to select this surface. Now I'm going to press X, dissolve faces. This turns this into one face face. You can do the same on any little area like this, like this, or like this, as long as the area is flat. If you have a hole in an area such as this one up here, dissolving faces is not going to work. This is because Blender cannot create an N-Gon which has a hole in it. There has to be some connection to the outside. So in this case, we can select all of this, deselect two faces, then you can dissolve faces and turn this into an N-Gon. And you need to have at least two edges connecting a hole to the outside. You can place those anywhere you want by joining two other vertices and deleting any one of these over here. Now you got much less geometry, but you didn't affect your shape. We can also dissolve this, dissolve this, dissolve every surface where you got a bunch of geometry, connect this, dissolve this. We can even get rid of this for now, just for this exercise. And make sure you select any vertices that you have left over on the sides like this. Once you got them selected, press X, dissolve vertices. Now, if you want to add smooth shading, for example, for the sake of this inner area over here, or if you want to bevel this and you want to make the edges a little bit smoother. And by the way, if you bevel something like this, make sure you switch to outer mirror to something like patch or arc. That's going to give you cleaner geometry here so you can work with it if you got to do something else. Right now, that doesn't matter because we're using angle, but just remember this for the future. So if you're trying to use smooth shading, look what happens. A bunch of angons, it's a complete atrocity. But we can clean this up by either selecting the sharp edges, which we don't want shaded smooth, such as all these edges around here, and we can press control E, mark sharp. Then instead of shade smooth, we're going to use shade auto smooth and crank this shit all the way up. Now, only the edges which are marked as sharps are going to have sharp shading. The rest is going to be smooth. And as you can see over here, your other option is to use bevels. Instead of adding sharp to these edges, we can select all these sharp edges like this. And now we can just go control B, add a bevel which has a shape of one and two segments. Now you can use smooth shading and it's even going to look like there's a nice round bevel on every corner, but you're not going to get any shading artifacts on your end gone. It's also very easy to UV unwrap this. As you can see, the shape stays exactly the same on your UV map. And since we're on the topic of topology and cutting holes and all this other shit, I'm also gonna throw this in there, which can help you cut holes and attach shapes to other shapes. This is also something that I talked about in the topology section of my ebook, but seeing how much you guys like this topic, it looks like I'm gonna have to update the shit out of that. Anyway, one way that you can cut holes or attach stuff while keeping perfect topology is this. Let's say that I want to make a hole in this sphere right here, which has this shape right here. Now, one way might be to select some geometry like this, inset it, and adjust the geometry by sliding sliding it back and forth, but this might be very difficult and we might not get the shape that we're looking for very easily without completely messing up the geometry here. So another way that you can do this is to take this surface, use this magnet shit right here and set it to face project, check these two boxes, align rotation to target, project individual elements. And now when you move this and you hover your mouse over a surface, it's going to stick to that surface perfectly. You have to count how many edges you have around this shape. In this case, we got four times four, which is 16. So we need to find the surface below, which is also going to have 16 edges on the outline. That might be this surface right here. We're going to place this over that surface like this. Now add a shrink wrap modifier to this object. Use the eyedropper to target the surface below. Set the wrap method to project. And now press G to move this and double Z to 
to move it along its local z-axis which allows you to just glue this onto the surface below perfectly. Make sure that no part of this surface is sticking out of your designated area anywhere because this isn't going to work if you have that problem. So you might have to rotate this a little bit and once you're ready you can apply the shrink wrap modifier, select this surface and select the sphere, control J, now they're part of the same object. So you can delete this designated area on the sphere, select the outline of the surface which we just glued to the sphere, then select the other outline, press W, bridge edge loops. You might have to shift some of the surrounding geometry with double G, but now you can very easily extrude this inwards, extrude it outwards, and with shade auto smooth this is going to look really good. You can even bevel this and if you add a subdivision surface modifier to this it's going to work very well. That's just one way of attaching shit to different surfaces. Again if you want to do very complex shapes go watch Thomas Cullen. That's all I got for you guys in this video. If you want some more topology tips we can make another video with some practical examples. I am aware that there are many add-ons which you can use for this type of shit but I can't sit here and teach you guys how to use paid add-ons. What's the point of using a free program learning on a free platform if I'm gonna tell you you gotta pay money to get an add-on just to perform a simple task which can also be done for free you guys go watch the other channels if you want to learn about add-ons i don't do that shit over here like the damn video let me know what you want to see next and i'll see you in the next one